our attention toward what evidence we have toward treating stiffness. Miklovitz in 2004 provided us with a systematic review looking at therapy interventions for improving range of motion. And she found that there is moderate evidence after joint injury or fracture that we are able to use splints or casts to increase range of motion. And that we also are able to use passive range of motion to increase range of motion. We're going to look a bit more at this question of passive range of motion as we go further in this discussion. Glasgow and Associates in 2011 looked at what factors predict contracture resolution when a dynamic orthosis is being used. The results are very much as we would expect that if there is less stiffness to start with, the response is better. If there's a shorter time since injury, the response is better. And it's also better if one is working toward a flexion direction than the, an extension direction, since we have more power toward flexion. Glasgow also referred to the modified Weeks test which is an angle measurement of a joint before and after heat and passive range of motion. And in this example, it was the use of a dynamic orthosis. The heat and the orthosis were used for 30 minutes. If a large improvement was noted in the range of motion, the patient is then determined to have a small degree of stiffness. But if there is a limited or small response in improvement, then the degree of stiffness is considered to be higher. Hand and upper extremity rehab specialists in McMurray, Pennsylvania have taken the modified Weeks test and used an angled measurement after heat for 15 to 20 minutes and passive range of motions and they have assigned spe a specific number of degree response to determine their treatment approach. With a 10 to 20 degree gain, they choose serostatic or a dynamic orthosis, but if it's less than 10 degrees, they choose static progressive. Their choice of this treatment approach should provide useful information to determine whether or not this is an appropriate application of the modified Weeks test. But I would ask you, are we really asking the right question about stiffness? Often the question is which orthosis is best to increase range of motion? I'm really not sure that's the best question. We also ask Will passive range of motion effectively increase motion? Passive range of motion is not the end goal. The end goal is active range of motion. Therefore, I question whether or not we want to focus on passive motion. Miklovitz put forth these questions in 2004. Is orthotic mobilization joint mobilization and exercise better than no intervention. In other words, most patients get better on their own over time. Do these interventions improve impairment, functional limitation, and disability, or do they just change range of motion? Do we know if there is one particular type of intervention that is more effective than another? And most of all, what should be the intensity and frequency of intervention? We do not yet have answers to these questions. The answers to these questions should be our focus as we move forward in our treatment of stiffness. The question I would like to pose is instead of what is the best orthotic approach, what is the problem and what is the best solution? It seems it would be logical to better define the cause of stiffness in order to know how to treat it. 